Hey, welcome to Tabletop Skirmish Games. I'm Lee, and in this video, I'll show you how I painted Glaurio, then Alton the Third to a tabletop ready standard using mostly contrast paints. And here he is, Glaurio Ven Alton the Third, perhaps the most pretentious name out of the Warhammer world so far, but he's ready to get painted and he's all primed. And I primed him with the Wraithbone paint, and usually I'd use the Contrast Undergoat Wraithbone spray, but I did it by hand this time with regular base paint. And we'll be painting him today with mostly contrast paints. And the brush I use a lot is the Army Painter Wargamer character brush, but I've also been using the Kalinsky number no. two a lot, and I can highly recommend it. Right, let's get started and we're going to take a base paint which is lead belcher and I'm going to block in all the metal parts of the miniature that we want to finish in silver. And the idea with this miniature is to keep things nice and simple. I'm using the image supplied with the Cursed City set as my guide and I'm just going to keep it really simple. I'm going to block in all the metallic kind of paints first and then we're going to tidy it up and then start going over all the areas with contrast paints. And we're just looking for a tabletop ready standard here. Nothing fancy and I'm not going to pick out too many like details or anything like that. No highlighting, just going to use the contrast paints. So with like mostly one coat of each paint to get a nice finish. But here we go, I'm just covering this now in all the metallic areas, picking that out. Some areas is a gold and later on we'll be using a gold paint for that just to make sure we've got a nice difference between the gold parts and the metal parts but if you wanted to you could just use lead belcher and then go over it with different colored contrast paints and that's a really nice way to use the contrast paints for some nice metallic effects and that's a really good thing to try out if you haven't yet but I'll be using retributor armor here for the gold and I really want the gold to stand out a lot more so I figured using these two metal paints first would achieve that and so I'm just going over the little ring here. He's also got like a, a skull brooch on his cloak. So I want that to really stand out as gold. So going over that. Also parts of the gun, the little pistol there, that's gold as well. So I'm just picking those sections out and just giving this a nice even coat. Wet it down a tiny, tiny bit. Hardly any water. Almost just the amount of water that I first kind of wet the brush with really. Hardly any at all. But just enough so that this gets a nice thin coat. And then we go going over this little detail on the belt as well and I'm taking my time here and I've switched up brushes I've moved on to the Kalinsky brush now just to have a little bit more control and the you know having that bigger brush with the finer point is going to really help me get that nice and neat and tidy and then finally on the kind of is it a pauldron the little thing on his shoulder there he's got a skull that I wanted to be gold so I want this to be silver and gold so I'm just going over that and now I'm taking some Stormhost Silver, another layer paint, and I'm just going to block in this little bit here, which I assume is a mirror. It looks like he'd carry a mirror around with him, keeping his beard nice and trim. So I'm going to go over that with this Stormhost Silver, and then later on we'll put a contrast paint over it to give it like a little, almost like a reflection effect. And now I'm just, I'm not dry brushing, but there's hardly any paint left on the brush now, and I'm just running it across all the kind of most raised areas, and this is just to break up that solid lead belcher it's kind of like a highlight but not really i'm not edge highlighting or anything i just want to put little uh, dabs of paint all over it just to break it up a little bit but i do go a little bit heavier over these little rivets that are holding these armor plates in place and then just dab it over the kind of flatter raised areas just to break it up and then we'll cover it with some contrast paints later and i'm also going a bit heavier along the edge here and so that's just going to make that stand out a little bit more as well so I'm doing this all before the contrast paints go on so we don't have to do it at the end and this bits a bit fiddly so I'm just trying to maneuver the model make sure I can get in there and now we're moving back to the base wraith bone and I'm just going to do a little tidy up stage now and just go over all the areas that I didn't want to paint silver if I've made any mistakes I'll just tidy those up and just along here we've got like a little bit of fur and that meets a little bit of black material so I want to make sure that's nice and crisp and that's a good thing with the contrast paints just make it sure it's nice and tidy now I'm taking a technical contrast medium and contrast Gilliman flesh I'm doing two parts contrast medium to one part flesh and then that's going all over the kind of face and he's got gloves on so it's just the face we're focusing on here you won't do any other parts of the body and also his little mouth in between the moustache and the beard and I've got a decent amount of paint on the brush not flooding it 
but a good amount on there because I wanted it to go in the eyes. I'm also using the texture of the miniature and the sculpt to almost rub the paint off so that this contrast paint really goes into those recesses like on the ear and then on the more like flatter area on the back of the head that's going to get like a lot more of a highlight naturally so I don't want that to pull there but I do want it to darken on the ear and also in the eye sockets and under the neck as well so I am putting as I get to those areas where I want more paint I'm just putting more on my brush and then forcing it in there then pushing and pulling that contrast paint around until it sits exactly where I want it and then once I've got it in place I stop playing with it and let it do its work and then move on to some contrast black templar and with this black templar I'm just doing that little bit of material between the fur and the metal plates and this is where the Kalinsky size number two brush is really good because it holds a lot more paint you've got more control it doesn't dry out and that tips really fine so I can highly recommend this brush if you haven't tried it already and so I'm going all along there just getting that line nice and neat being as tidy as I can if I make a mistake I can always go over it again with the wraith bone and touch up and if I go over the metal at this stage then I can again I can go back and start that process again but uh, it won't be too much of a problem this will almost give a little shadow as well but I'm using this black on a lot of the material and also for any leather parts like the gloves and shoes we're going to use this black templar as well so at this stage I'm not putting a lot of paint on the brush just enough so that it kind of almost comes off like a felt tip pen would you know not too heavy we don't want this to be like um, a thick paint but once I move on here to the boot then I'm really loading that brush up and this is where the contrast paints really come into their own and they're great for areas like this where there's lots of folds um, like different leathers and really work nicely but for these boots we've got lots of creases so I'm loading the paint up and then I'm starting and ending my brush stroke where I want most of that paint to build up and then if I find it's on the raised areas too much I can just push it and pull it around with the brush and having this bigger brush gives me a lot of control with how much the brush can like uh, put on the model at any one time and it also lets me wick away any paint if I put too much on so if there's too much on a raised area I can wipe my brush on some kitchen towel and then just soak up that paint and then just move it around to where I want it to go but I'm trying to get the whole boot done quite quickly so that we don't get any like stain lines between the paints as we apply it because if we kind of let it dry out too quickly and then add another one and start moving it around you can get little stain lines um, occurring and we don't want that and now I'm moving on to the belt and I'm being very careful here just going inside that gold buckle that we painted again if we make a mistake and go over the gold we can certainly tidy it up that's no problem and I'm just working away all along that belt again not as much paint as I put on the boot now so I'm easing off with the amount of paint I'm loading my brush up with so just having that control is really important with the contrast paint you don't want to put too much on for some elements but other things like cloaks and leather bits benefit from having quite a lot of paint so same here you can see that I'm wiping the brush along the edge of the model for the uh, the the holder for the sword I can't think what it's called uh, scabbard is it I think and then I'm just wiping that off my brush and then pushing it along and then pushing it into the recesses and the great thing with the contrast paint is it wants to go in those cracks and creases and so it really flows nicely but um, sometimes it needs a little help along so just push it around you're in control of it show it where you want it to go and make sure it sits there but just as soon as it's in place don't play too long uh, with it and once it starts drying certainly leave it alone then so we don't get those dodgy stains and now I'm doing the hair and I've got to admit this face was a bit intimidating doing this level of detail the methods I use with the contrast paints is always to get it done neatly but quite quick and I'm at no level where I can start painting in details like eyes and things like that yet and um, so and I almost want it to be quite vague I like the style like the watercolor style and I like how that you can use contrast paints to achieve that with the the miniatures and but I'm being really careful here with the beard and certainly the mustache I struggle quite a bit with that I'm, I'm sticking with the number two brush so it's quite big and I've got enough on there so it doesn't dry out and keeping that super fine point but yeah really fiddly so you can see I'm moving the model around a lot so I've got can keep my arms like braced on the table so I've got a lot of control and I'm taking my time as I move in to put the paint on but here I'm just starting to complete the beard and then we'll move on to the moustache and yeah here we go you can see it's so fine just a little strip so I'm just putting a little bit on at a time 
and I'm really taking my time here. I'm thinking if I have to do a couple of layers to get it right, then I will. And so I'm just trying to roll that brush through the paint and pull it through the paint to get a really nice fine tip to the brush and then just putting it on. But I found like sometimes you can use the side of the brush for any raised areas like this, but it's so um, small that I had to almost just use the tip to paint it on. But uh, that's one side done and I managed to do the other as well. But I was happy with the end result. Got a bit on the nose, but we tidied that up no problem. Then I thought, let's take some black and try and paint some, like, not eyebrows, but just to kind of give the eyes a bit more, um, like, definition, just with a little shadow there. And I messed it up. I shouldn't have done that. So I had to go back to Wraithbone, pull back the paint, put the the um, Gilliam and Flesh and Contrast Medium mix back on, and so I redid the top of the face. And that left it a little bit scruffy, so I wouldn't advise doing that unless you know what you're doing and I didn't know what I was doing I just wanted to try something different I didn't pay out but anyway now we're on to the contrast Griffhound orange and this is going to be for the trousers and also for a little bit of the material like the braids that go across the front of the armor plate on the chest plate and so I'm putting quite a lot on here because again we've got lots of nice folds lots of creases that's where the contrast plate likes to go and then it'll give us some really nice shadow and so I'm just making sure I'm being really careful not to get it on the areas I've already painted and just pushing it around again and pulling it to get it in place. And then on the cloak, I want the cloak to be red, but I really like doing an orange undercoat first. And then once that's dried, going over it with the red, because I find that the orange comes through on the raised areas and gives us a really nice highlight. And that orange highlight against a flat red is really nice. So I like to do that now. So I'm just putting this on. I want this red to be really regal and deep. So the orange really helps to like deepen it and really gets those um, highlights to come through uh, for not much effort, really. So just one coat of this. But I'm putting it on quite heavy because this is also going to help us deepen and darken those shadows. So you'll see at the end that the shadows are quite dark on this cloak. And so it helps by doing the two layers of the different contrast paint to get that effect. So I'm going all over it, again, pushing, pulling it around, starting and ending my brush strokes where I want most of the paint to build up and using the contours of the miniature to wipe the paint off the brush and then guide it along to where I want it to go. And so here on this front of the jacket as well, just finishing that bit off and that's where we'll get most of the highlight. Then I'm moving on to some Contrast Space Wolves Grey and this is just for this little pouch here. And this can be quite pale, this can dry quite pale. So I'm putting it on quite thick because it can give us a nice shadow and leave those areas almost looking like they've been scuffed. It's a little pouch, maybe it's got some gold in there or some gunpowder. Either way, he's handling it a lot and there's going to be some kind of lighter patches for sure on that with the wear and tear. And so I'm making sure I put quite a lot on under the, the underside, wiping it off, pushing it around, making sure there's recesses are nice and dark. And then I thought I'd take a light coat of this and just go over all those metal plates on the, the kind of lower half of the model. And that's just gonna break up that silver, give it a little blue tinge. And I think that slight blue, which won't stand out too much, will work nicely with the oranges and the yellows and the reds that we're using. Then I've gone back to Retributor Armor base paint. And I just wanna tidy up that buckle and just make it a lot neater. So make these lines nice and crisp. So I'm just going over that. Again, now I'm onto the Kalinsky and um, synthetic number two for that. And now I'm taking the Contrast Nasdreg Yellow. This is a nice, rich, almost gold yellow. And I'm going to use this for the sash that he's got under the mirror. And a little bit of the material from that sash runs underneath his leather belt. So I'm just going along that very fine bit on you can see on the top of the belt there. And for that stage, I didn't have too much paint on my brush. But for this main sash here underneath the mirror, I'm putting a little bit more on. Still not flooded it. I'm not using a huge amount but enough to get sh get enough in those creases because that's going to give us a little bit of shadow, but being careful not to get it on the mirror as well. And so just going all over all that sash, making sure it gets a nice even coat, but enough left behind to give us a little shadow. And so this is going to work nice with the reds and oranges. And then I'm taking some Agoras Dunes, and this is a nice colour. Again, it's a little bit of a gold kind of colour and the sandy gold. And this is going to go on all the fur sections. So we've got the fur running down, around the lower half around this kind of uh almost like skirt that's got the armor plates on and then we're also going to have fur on his jacket and cloak so we're going to give that a nice coat too and i can be a bit heavier with this 
because this is one of those ones again you're going to get a nice deep shadow from it but the raised areas are going to be a lot paler so you get a nice contrast there but just running along being careful not to go over the black because it's quite strong so if you go over different colors you will see it so be a bit careful here with this stage but with the um you know not too much on the brush it's not going to run off you've got complete control of it it's just getting that balance right of how much contrast paint you put on your brush so just being careful there and again underneath you're not really going to see these very fine bits underneath so um and it's almost going to add to shadow if you do go over it a little bit and then just going over that little bit there in the front of the fur and with this fur i go a bit heavier so a little bit more paint on the brush than i use for those trims and then i'm just kind of brushing down and pushing it around here i put quite a lot on you can see there i'm wiping that brush uh, that brush off getting all that paint off it and then just spreading it around to where i want it to go and i do that all over the fur then i take some contrast basilicanum gray and this is just going to be a little bit uh, of the paint to go on the like almost shirt that you can see and this is the only section you can see here which is his right arm and there's a few folds so i've gone a bit heavier with the paint just being careful again now i'm taking some flesh terror red contrast medium and i'm doing a two parts medium to one part red and then i'm going to give one coat all over the orange like jacket and i'm not going to go over the trousers with this this is just for the jacket so i want this to be that deep red almost regal color and we'll also put a layer of um a shade over this at the end just to darken it a bit more and make it a little bit deeper and so i'm almost trying here not to go over the kind of the raised areas of orange that you can see at the bottom where the jacket meets the fur so i want that orange to act as my highlight so having that like orange comes through is a really nice highlight for red and then i'm taking some fire slayer flesh and i wondered what would happen if i put this over orange um, and so i thought i'd try it out on just these little braided uh, bits of material that go over the chest plate and that worked nicely that was a, quite a nice effect i felt a little bit too brown to go over the trousers so i just put it there and then i took some null oil some shade and this is going to go over all the silver parts of the metal and i made sure everything's dry at this stage so i didn't do this until everything i've just done was completely dry and i'm being quite generous with the null oil making it all over that's going to go in and just darken those shadows and recesses a little bit more it's also going to dirty it up so we don't want this to be immaculate we want to break it up a little bit um, i'm not going over the gold here if i can help it i might put just a little bit on but i'm going to use another shade later the agrax earth shade for the gold because that's a bit browner this null oil is like more black so it works great for the silver so this is going all over and here you can see i put it over the whole part of this part of the armor wiping my brush and pushing and pulling it around just like i do with the contrast paint but it tends to be a lot thinner um a bit more watery so you can kind of have a little bit more work here and getting it where you want it but once it's in place just leave it alone and it doesn't tend to stain as much as the contrast paints either so you've got a little bit longer for it to dry so i'm just going over all the metal areas and that's going to give us a nice effect we want the metal to look quite new we don't want it to look dirty um and like um rusty or anything like that so and then i'm putting a little bit in the eye sockets as well and that worked a lot better than that paint i did earlier right now it's time for the agrax earth shade and i thought putting this kind of brown shade over the red would really deepen it and just change it a little bit and i also use this a lot this color this red on some other miniatures from different war bands in Warcry. so i wanted it just to be slightly different in color so this worked nicely i think i was quite happy with this made it a bit more deep and rich uh, so i like that and then i went over it all the gold parts as well so all the gold metal got a little coat of this and so i'm just putting that all over it again just the same as the null oil just push it around where you want it to go making sure this gets a coat in and i also put some on that shoulder armor as well so i'm just putting it on the gold i'm trying not to get any on the silver here and while i'm doing this those um like raised areas with the biggest highlight on that shoulder part i tried not to get any of the null oil on it at all right now to finish off i'm taking some contrast gore grunter fur and i was going to leave this um like creamy white like it showed on the photo but i wanted to, in the end i didn't like it so i thought let's put some ready orangey brown on there so it's like um like a wood effect on the pistol instead and then once that's done that's the painting complete so then i didn't glue this in i just pulled it out and we see we've got this little peg that holds him in place on the stands so i'm just going to trim that off with my clippers so i just take my clippers carefully twist it and snip it off being really careful here 
once that's snipped off I'm just taking my stibbers and just trimming and tidying that up just so it's nice and crisp being really careful not to cut into anything I've painted and so just trimming that away and then I'm gonna take a little file just a little tiny file and I'm just gonna go along that base and this is gonna help the glue kind of adhere it easier to the base and here's one I made earlier here's the base for Curse City I've done a video on this if you want to check that out I'll show you how I made it and then hit gonna attach the miniature to it with some super glue and then I'm just gonna pop it in place and he's just gonna stand there just like that on his base all ready to go and there he is Glario Van Outen the third all tabletop ready painted with mostly contrast paints. I was really happy with how he turned out on the base. A shame I messed his face up because that really did take something away from the model um, and having to do that again didn't make it as neat as I'd like. But I was really happy with the cloak that Ag Agrax Earthshade over the top made it really deep and regal against the Agoras Dunes. And I think uh, it's a really interesting character this and he was voted for by my Patreon supporters and the next one I'll be painting will be the Dwarf hero from Curse City and I'll also be painting all the miniatures from Curse City so if you're interested in seeing how I do that with the contrast paint then those videos will be coming out thick and fast now uh, now I've finished this first one. I'll put a list for all the paints I use in the description below and I'll also put links to Element Games. There'll be affiliate links but they won't cost you anything extra. In fact you can save up to 20% there with those links and for every sale made I get a small commission and that's going to help me do loads more videos like this. So thanks so much for that support. I really appreciate it. If you like this kind of content and would like to support the channel then please check out my Patreon page and thanks to everyone who's joined so far. It's really awesome. We hang out on Discord, talk about the hobby, share our ideas and help each other out and you'll get some perks there that you're not going to find anywhere else. So I'll put a link in the description and it'll be great to see you there. I hope you enjoyed the video and there'll be loads more coming for all the other heroes and hostiles from Curse City so they'll all be on the channel over the next couple of weeks and if you're watching this in the future they'll be there already but thanks so much for watching please like if you like it subscribe for more videos like this and don't forget to hit that notification bell to join me next time on Tabletop Skirmish Games. <laughs>